everybody and welcome to this instalment of the Energy Academy. Today we'll be looking at Project Tear. Before we get into that though, we first need to touch on the Electricity and Balancing Guidelines or EBGL. The EBGL was published back in 2017 with the aim of establishing a pan-European market for energy balancing services with the goals of maintaining security of supply, increasing competition and minimising cost to consumers. The EBGL is a huge piece of regulation and implementing its various components is a mammoth task requiring the coordination of several transmission system operators across Europe. To make things a little easier, the European Network of Transmission System Operators for Electricity or ENSOE have created several implementation projects. These projects include Project Mari, Project Picasso and the subject of today's video, Project Tear. Project Tear is widely considered to be the most advanced project detailed in the EBGL and it was created to establish a new market for trading reserve services. This market is called the Trans-European Replacement Reserve Exchange or TEAR which is where the project gets its name. Project TEAR has three main goals. Firstly, harmonising international markets. As a trans-European initiative, the TEAR market covers multiple countries and transmission system operators across Europe. Currently, there are six TSOs acting as operational members of TEAR. France, Czech Republic, Italy, Portugal, Spain and Switzerland. Then there are a number of additional TSOs participating in the project in an observational or development capacity, including National Grid ESO of Great Britain. Next up, let's take a look at the product traded on TEAR. This is called Replacement Reserve and makes up the double R in TEAR. We'll refer to it as RR from here on out. The RR product was defined back in 2019 in the Replacement Reserve Implementation Framework and it consists of a 15 minute block with symmetric 5 minute ramp up and ramp down profiles at either end. The RR product is similar to the bids and offers we're familiar with in the balancing mechanism and providers can be called upon to both turn up and turn down generation and demand. To find out more about how the balancing mechanism works, check out our Academy video on the subject. Lastly, let's take a look at the final aim of Project Tear, establishing a trading platform for all the participating TSOs. The Libra platform is the brain of the Tear market and is responsible for matching supply and demand. Libra was launched in January 2020 and operates on a TSO to TSO model. What does that mean? Well, balancing services providers or BSPs interact with their domestic TSOs by submitting offers to provide replacement reserve. The TSOs then aggregate all of these offers and pass on their supply and demand data to the centralised TEAR platform. All the TSOs in the TEAR do the same, with the Libra platform calculating which replacement reserve offers to accept in the most cost effective way. This information is then passed back to individual BSPs with the TSOs issuing instructions for activation. We've only really scratched the surface of all things Project Tear, and there's a wealth of information out there on its ongoing progress and implementation. Before we conclude though, it's worth pointing out how Tear interacts with the existing power markets in Great Britain, or rather, how it doesn't. Following countless delays regarding Britain's participation in the Tear, the final nail in the coffin came with the UK's exit from the European Union. Brexit brought with it the stipulation that the UK would not be allowed to participate directly with dedicated European platforms. As such, the future of Tear is somewhat uncertain, with the most likely outcome being the UK operates a Tear-like mechanism without any cross-border components. But for the time being, we're waiting on more information from the ESO on the future of this service. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.